Hi everyone in Cloud Computing and welcome to episode 65 of the Cloud Computing Australia show featured on YouTube and podcast with Brad Nelson and internationally recognised and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show we are talking about the Amazon's land grab for the e-commerce and cloud computing markets in Australia have resulted in soaring revenues but also mounting losses. The Australian e-commerce business made $292.3 million Australian dollars in revenue in calendar 2018, its first full trading year, but losses of $5.3 million Australian dollars after tax. Hi Dave, it's great to see you on the Australia show this week. Yeah, it's great to be back, and uh, this is uh, this is a great topic as we're we're talking about cloud growth specifically in Australia. And I thought the author did a good job in kind of tearing this apart. Yeah, absolutely. Look, opening question then, Dave. Do you see Australia's AWS having to face more losses before they inflect the market in Australia? Yeah, you know, it's funny. It's uh, it's kind of a cultural thing when I was reading the uh, the article because in the United States we, we uh, we're okay to waste money <laughs> as long as we get to a high valuation that allows us to exit. And so I, I thought the the um, uh, you know whomever maybe this is Amazon or maybe it was the author was probably being a little bit hard on themselves. I think that the uh, amount of money they're investing is spot on, best based on the growth that they have. I mean. Um, when you grow a technology business in another country, it really truly is like starting a new business. Um, probably not as much in Australia as it is in China and other other you know very different cultural places. But you know Australia does take you have to put people on the ground. You have to understand the market. You have to sell differently. You have to in essence build uh, relationships with different companies and. That takes a lot of cash, and it takes a lot more cash than I think people think. And one of the most expensive things that I've ever uh, spent money on in my years as a CTO was uh, going to other markets and other countries. You know, the EU and UK and Australia and uh, and Asia Pac and things like that. So it is really just kind of the cost of doing business. I think Amazon's going to be able to make their money back, and not just in revenue coming back to the com company, which is good, but the value that they have, and really, this is a value play. And so, you know, Amazon Web Services, you know, has got to be approaching, you know, um, valuation of two hundred billion dollars or something like that. Don't quote me on that and trade on that. That's just a guess. But uh, the reality is, if they've done a great job just keeping consistent growth and building their services and building the quality of systems, and so has Microsoft and Google, Google and Alibaba for that matter. But you know, Am AWS is the hundred pound gorilla. So I wouldn't worry about losses. Um, and if I was an investor, I probably would. Your money's going to come back to you. And if I was an employee of AWS in Australia, I wouldn't worry about losses. And if I was an executive at AWS, whether you're in Australia or back in the mothership in Seattle, uh, I wouldn't worry about losses. And I don't think they are. You know, they run a fairly tight ship. So they're, they're very frugal uh, in terms of how they spend money. And they're also pretty agile in terms of how they're building services. So uh, this is one of those things where you're probably finding something to complain about and uh, you're not finding much to complain about. Very true. And I mean, Amazon, I think, in, the, in Australia has got two very uh, identifi identifiable camps, as it were. You've got the infrastructure with obviously still being a, a massive contender in that market, the, the market leader in out of the big five, as it were, anyway, for certainly the end of the quarter for 2018, at, I think about 32% of the market. Um, globally, I do believe, but but equally, um, you've got the Amazon store retail side to it, and I think that's you know I think you know that has impacted Australia, but also maybe not not dented the retail market, uh, you know, as greatly as what would have first been uh, assumed, uh, and I think logistics have played a huge a huge part of that. So it's it's interesting how both of those parts play a part in that you know the retail and the infrastructure side to it. So where do you see this leveling off though, David? They uh, built their first data center in 2012, and they made uh, you know 306 million sales plus uh, two million as the landlord as the related parties. But uh, they lost 15 million um, and uh, sorry, 16 million and change after a 6.9 million provisioning for income taxes. Man, your taxes are high over there. Um, so what this kind of says to me is that they're in it for the long term. They're looking to invest in whether it's their retail 
uh, Oregon, their dot com or their, their AWS part of it. And I think that the infrastructure business over in Australia is just going to be a huge uh, cash cow. And I think that a lot of companies are relocating near Australia. A lot of new companies are being built in Australia. Um, you know, it's not the major market like Asia Pac and the US and, and the EU things, but it is big enough of a market where it's hugely interesting to, you know, people with AWS. And also, I think that. Um, uh, AWS and other cloud providers are going to use Australia as kind of an incubator for stuff. And so they're going to try it there first. And because it is kind of reflecting, we talked about this on the show before, it's very reflective of other markets probably a year or two ahead of time. And so it seems that you guys are getting on the bandwagon and making things, kind of taking things to the next level, um, like cloud computing, infrastructure as a service, things like that. Amazon, you know, uh, Microsoft and Google, you know, before the rest of the world. And so you're putting more trust in, in technology than I think a lot of people are, are thinking about it in some of the other other, you know, major countries because they they're, have a tendency to be a little bit more conservative. So it's a it's it's kind of funny where the market is going in Australia. It is really kind of tech focused. Uh, and it's really kind of a first adopter focus, and people really don't understand that who don't, don't really kind of study the market. In fact, since we've been doing this show, you know, I spent a lot of time in show, show prep analyzing the technology consumption of Australia. And you know, like, if you look at the ratio um, based on the amount of money that's, uh, that's made in Australia, the gross national product versus their consumption of technology, uh, it, it's probably either number one or number two uh, in the world. So it's a market I don't think people really kind of understand is there. Um, but once people get into it, really kind of it's a, it's a cash cow. And also it's a good place to start a business if you want to grow businesses in the rest of the world because it's a friendly business environment. There's a lot of talent and skilled people there. Hope people are talking to you about hiring them. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a... Uh, not an unexpected news about Amazon in Australia, and I just hope people don't realize this is bad news. It's actually good news. They're spending money and losing money. Yeah, absolutely. And I think if you are losing money, then you're spending the right amount of money to a certain degree, if that makes sense. Uh, you, you, if, you're not, if you're spending the money and not losing the money in technology, you're not actually developing, I don't think. There's got to be some losses somewhere, if that makes any sense. Yeah, I mean, in technology, you know, I've started, um, you know, half a dozen technology companies, which I sold, and... The reality is a lot cheaper now that we have cloud computing and we can, you know, rent some of the assets and a lot of stuff is on demand. But, you know, you have to spend at least $10 million to get to a single dollar, uh, even if you're doing, you know, cloud based development. And so people don't really kind of understand that. So it's not this I can organically grow something. You have to hire an R&D team. You have to get a DevOps environment. You have to get a development environment, a production environment. People who understand security and governance and configuration management and source code control, all these sorts of things. Um, pretty easy to do, but you got to spend a ton of money to make that happen. And so people, you know, kind of think about this stuff started in the garage. I think in many instances it does start in the garage, but really kind of as, as an idea or a prototype, and you actually want to do something and sell something, you know, that's when you have to spend a lot more money than people think. But that's also why they get the big valuations on the product companies. Yeah, absolutely. Apologies, everyone, if you're experiencing some sort of lag at the moment on the uh, on the Skype call that we've got. But there is a, I think there is a slight time delay. Hopefully, that's not going to uh, uh, deter from the viewing too much. Dave, thank you so much. Yeah, I mean, it's, you, you've you've covered some fantastic points, and it's moved us on nicely to that part of the show where you do the uh, your top three tips. If you haven't already shared about six or seven of them, uh, but your top three would be great, great if you wouldn't mind sharing. <laughs> Yeah, what we just mentioned, make sure you understand the investment that you need to make. I think that a lot of people underinvest, undercapitalize, and they end up uh, not making the biggest bet. Now, that is whether you're building technology like you know AWS is and Google is and Microsoft, or even if you're a small startup, but it's also if you're going to get into business, it's going to leverage technology. You have to leverage it in a certain way, and you need to lubricate the momentum of the business at first with cash and resources to get those things up and running. I can't stress that enough. If I see technology, um, you know, kind of go away and die the death of a thousand cuts, it's typically because it's undercapitalized and underinvested in. Make sure you understand the cash flow as the stuff goes in. And so losses don't really scare me as long as you plan for them. And you can normally see them coming. So when you do projections, when you're running a business, um, you have to Make sure the account for the money coming in and the money leaving, so you don't end up uh, in a cash crisis. You know, not be able to make payroll or, 
you know, uh, qu uh, losing quality on product delivery and things like that. That those are uh, injuries that almost never heal. Um, then end users should pay. Uh, end users should um, you know pay little attention to whether Amazon is losing money or not. Uh, at the end of the day, you look at their stability as a company; they're not going away. Whether you're uh, also the other cloud companies as well, and you know don't care about the stock price. I remember I used to when I was a CTO of a publicly traded company. I used to get grilled on the stock price, and it was really kind of a matter of the market. And I always thought the end users were, you know, misinformed to worry about the business. You know, the end users should be worried about what kind of features and functions are coming down the line and if they're focused on that then they're not focused on the real the real things they need to be focused on yeah great top tips there Dave thanks for your top tips and thanks for being on the Australia show this week that's great pleasure thanks Dave and thanks for watching everyone really hope you enjoyed watching this week's show you can get Dave on Twitter which is at David Linthicum myself on Twitter at Nelson underscore Hilliard we're on iTunes and Stitcher for podcasts don't forget those and in the description box below there are all the links for the social media and all the blogs as well so thanks for watching and until next week <laughs>